Hello and welcome to my machine learning video about k-means clustering. In this video I will explain how the algorithm works and so that you get a principal understanding of it. So let's suppose you are a fisher and you are sitting at the sea and you get a hundred of fish a single day. But you don't have a clue which kind of fish they are. The only thing you know is that there are two different kinds of fish in the sea. So let's suppose it is tuna and salmon, but you don't know how to classify them. So you need a pattern in the features of the fish so that you can make an established guess on how to separate those two kinds. Let's suppose you observe two features, weight and color, and you record them for each one. If you want to draw it on a diagram, it would look like this. If you have two features, that means you have a two-dimensional diagram. Now you want to discriminate between those classes, these two kinds of fish. That's where the k-means algorithm comes into play. Now, how does it work? The word means gives us a hint uh, that we have to calculate the means of the data points. If k would be equal to 1, it would be pretty easy to calculate the mean of all the data points. For each dimension you would add the values of each data point and then divide it by the total number of data points. That's where you get the means. But in our case, k is equal to 2. That makes the calculation a bit more complicated and we have to solve it iteratively. At first we have to pick initial points, which are probably not the means yet, but for the moment we treat them as such. These initial centroids can be picked randomly. Now how can we use means to separate those two kinds of fish? We just measure the distance from each of the mean points to each data point. Then for each data point we decide which mean point is the nearest. In this example we go with the bottom one. Let's decide for the color red for this data point. In another example we have a data point which is closest to the top mean point. So let's do this point in a green color. We repeat this process for every data point there is. So with the colors it would look like this. As you may have noticed, if we take the Euclidean distance to any point in space and assign the point to a mean, we will have a linear separation. In other words, there is a straight line which is separating the data. This line we call decision boundary. Now the problem is that this is a random line, because we picked the means randomly. What we do now is, for the divided data, we look at each fragment individually. So let's choose the red portion for now. Then we calculate the mean for only these data points. Since we now have only one mean to calculate, we can easily do that. Remember, for each dimension we sum all the values of the data points and then we divide it by the number of data points in that fragment. So this is where we end up with. Let's go one step back and also look at the green portion of the data. Also for that top mean, we ignore all the red points for the moment and calculate the mean only for the green data points. So both means change in this way. Now basically we know all the steps we need to find the right decision boundary for the two classes. We just need to repeat everything we know. Remember what we did when we had our initial means? We calculated the distances of every data point to every mean and assigned each data point to the nearest one. If we do that from this point, our line changes to the one before. That means now the data is separated differently. Now that again would give us the possibility to calculate the means again. Remember to calculate every mean for just the assigned data points. This is what we end up with. Now we repeat again. We calculate every distance, assign every data point to a cluster and then we get our new separation line. If we do that over and over, 
we arrive at some point where nothing happens anymore. So we have a convergence. This is the best line the algorithm can find. And by the looks of it, this would be the line which we would expect. So if you watched some of my other videos about the EM algorithm, you may have recognized that this is exactly an application of it. When we draw the separation line, this would correspond to the E step. Where we update our parameters, that is the means, we have our M step. We repeat that process until convergence. Some side marks before the end. The k-means algorithm is a very powerful tool which is used for many applications in machine learning. Especially if you have more than two features, let's say 10, you can't guess with your eye where the center points of the clusters are. So this algorithm is very useful to separate the data. This principle works exactly the same if you have more than two classes. But of course, the algorithm also has huge drawbacks. I will address them in one of my next videos. Then I also will talk about the math of the algorithm and how to implement it. And how to improve it, maybe. So thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you next time.